We all want a future that matters. Come on! This is a classic. What am I, Kirk? Is this the 2260s? All right. We are so getting fired for this. Let's show them who we are. Together. So, Bruce, for everybody who listened to our episode last week, uh, I guess we got that wrong with saying there's no start date for Discovery, huh? You know, that's the problem with podcasting. (laughs) Unless you release it immediately after you record it, it's already dated. Because I was like, oh, great. We recorded and then we're getting ready to release the episode a couple days later. And then they give us a date for Discovery. I'm like, okay, Mm -hmm. sure. Now our podcast comes out going, I wish we had a date. (laughs) <laughs> and of course the timing of it with uh my wedding and everything like we could have probably had time to re-record something if you know that hadn't been in there but i listened back to that episode and we say it several times through the episode too so that was a little difficult yeah i remember that i i had a feeling because i remember complaining quite a bit i just wish we had a date why didn't they give us a date and That's the question right now. Why didn't they give us a date? Why did it take a couple days later? Absolutely. Well, you are listening to Positively Trek. I'm Dan Gunther. And with me, as always, is Bruce Gibson. And as you've probably figured out, we're talking about a release date for Star Trek Discovery, which we now have. And this is really exciting because we get, as CBS has advertised over the last little while, 23 straight weeks of Star Trek. So we get 10 episodes of Lower Decks airing on Thursdays. And then immediately after that, on October the 15th, Star Trek Discovery starts and we get 13 weeks of that. How cool is this? How like so much Star Trek all in a row? It is. I mean, 2020 is a big year for Star Trek. We got the premiere of Picard. We're getting the premiere of Lower Decks. So two new Star Trek series premiered this year. And then we're getting the third season of Discovery. And as you're saying the 23 weeks in a row, I thought, well, that's essentially what it was back in the day when the original series Up Through Enterprise aired was about 23-ish episodes a season. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I've seen it said that this is the most Star Trek we've gotten in a single calendar year since 1999, which was the last time that both Deep Space Nine and Voyager were on at the same time. Oh, man. Those were the days. I remember those days. <laughs> but yeah, no, this this is great days now. As much as 2020 has really sucked because of obvious reasons, the highlight of this is Star Trek. Seriously. I mean, I'm stuck at home. I'm not hardly going anywhere. And I hey, you know what? I've got Star Trek to entertain me. I I can't complain. Absolutely. And, you know, not to throw a wet blanket on everything, though, but I I do kind of worry about the delay that will happen after this big chunk of Star Trek now because of the kind of knock-on effects of them being out of the studio for COVID. But, you know, let's not worry about that right now. Let's just enjoy, I guess, the Star Trek that we are going to have now, which is so cool. But again... Why now do we get the date? When they did the Comic-Con thing with the whole cast there, they could have made the announcement, which was on a Thursday. And I think what, we got the date on a Sunday? I think it was. It was on the weekend. I think it was Monday. On Monday, I, I, okay. I, yeah. But yeah, it's a, definitely a question. I don't know if maybe that was a split second decision. This is all just speculation on my part. I have no idea. But maybe they weren't really sure if they could and then the decision was made like that day or the day before or something but yeah i have no idea it seems very strange yeah and i also wonder because the because what we saw on comic-con was pre-recorded and Mm pre-edited so maybe they got the date and they're like well do we edit it in do we have time i don't know they still could have i don't know i don't know but anyway i i can't complain (laughs) Yeah, it kind of makes me feel better about us not going back and editing in the date on our podcast. Like in a lot of ways, that's kind of parallel to maybe what you're speculating CBS did with the Comic-Con stuff. You know what? Now that you mention it, Dan, we are so much like CBS. We're that professional. Definitely. (laughs) 
Alex Kurtzman controls this podcast. <laughs> For legal reasons, uh, I have to point out that that is not the case, but very funny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but he listens to it all the time. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he does. What if he does? We may not know that. Oh, I joke goodness. about it, but he may be listening right now. Hey, Alex, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do my own plane ticket. Just give me like uh, a small role. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm there. We'll be extras. I don't want to be in a lot of makeup, though. Yeah, I, I was actually, I was about to say that, oh, I can't, I can't come on the show because the border between Canada and the U.S. is still closed. But they filmed Discovery in Canada, so I can get on the show and, and Bruce, I don't know if you can. <laughs> I can't, but I could go on Picard because that's you could, yep. Los Angeles. So there we go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'll take it. So yeah, that of course is the big news that we've gotten recently is the release date for Star Trek Discovery, which we're of course very excited about. This week though, we have the premiere of Star Trek Lower Decks on Thursday. If you're listening to this as it comes out on Tuesday, just two days, we have Star Trek Lower Decks with the first episode, Second Contact, uh, airing this Thursday on CBS All Access in the States. In, on Crave and CTV Sci-Fi in Canada. And as of the recording, still nothing internationally, unless something's surfaced this morning, but right. I didn't see anything. But because you said that, we're going to get that information before this podcast is released. You know, I'm honestly at this point actually hoping that that's the case. Th this, this podcast is putting it out there. So if you get information about an international release before this podcast comes out, that's because... We put it mm -hmm. out there. That's why yep. it's because of this podcast. We put it out there. And all of a sudden in the ether, there's something spewing around that says, you know what? We need to, we need to make an announcement. We need to have an international release. And here it comes. You're, For sure. You're welcome. <laughs> it's an immutable scientific law. It, it follows the same scientific process as when you wash your car and then it rains the next day. That's, that's that same scientific process law at work it's a law of the universe that's right we actually thought about renaming this podcast car wash <laughs> well with that said that lower decks is starting this week uh, we have some announcements to make with regards to things coming up on this podcast that we think you'll be interested in so Bruce and I have decided to add two sort of sub shows in quote marks to this podcast. The idea behind these is that they will still exist in this same podcast feed. You won't have to subscribe to a new feed to get these episodes. They will be a part of this feed. You can listen to them or not as you choose. And uh, I think I should probably explain what these two shows are all about. Yeah, because I'm just dying to know, Dan. No, actually, no, I do know. No, we have been playing this for a while. As a matter of fact, it was always the intent. We just had to finalize some details but i yeah you you need to you, let's let's say it like because i'm i'm really excited to get this information out there because i want people to think that this podcast is not just us talking every week about just general star trek stuff we're going to go in deeper into some stuff definitely so first of all our our first new show that you will hear is our positively trek book club and those of you who have followed us on Literary Treks for the past few years know that one of our passions is the books and comics that make up the Star Trek universe. And we really still want to talk about that. This podcast was really started because we had a desire to expand our Star Trek discussions beyond books and comics. But just because we've left Literary Treks, we, that doesn't mean that we still don't want to talk about books and comics. So we're going to do that on this new book club show and the first episode is going to come really soon, and it will be on Friday, August 7th. Our first episode will drop, and we've got a really exciting episode for you. We're going to be covering a classic Star Trek novel, Strangers from the Sky. So if you haven't read that one, or if it's been a while since you've read it, you may want to pick that up and uh, give that a read. We're going to be talking about it this Friday, and... We're going to have a very special guest on the show to talk about that with. Yeah, this is a book that we've been discussing about covering on literary tracks for a number of years. As a matter of fact, I know it was being discussed even before we got on 
the literary track show. I remember Matt rushing, telling me that they were considering doing the book. It, it just for whatever reasons, never got to it. So when we're starting this book club, it's like, well, what can we start with? And lo and behold, why not the book that we've been wanting to cover for several years? And yes, that special guest is the author, Margaret Wander Bonanno. How exciting is that? I've never spoken to her. We've never had her on literary treks. And uh, it's just going to be great to dig into this book. Now, it's been 30 years, so I know she's a little worried, like, is she going to remember everything about the book? But I'm sure it will all start just coming back to her. Oh, yeah, definitely. And of course, we'll have lots of deep discussions about the book and stuff. But I'm also just interested to talk to her about her fandom and what got her started and that sort of thing. And we'll be talking about all of that for sure. I'm really excited to talk to one of the big names in Star Trek novels for many, many years. Yeah. And the one thing I just wanted to say to those who are listening, if you're not into the books, if you have no interest in this, then, you know, it's just then just skip over this episode. You know, you just skip over the book episodes, Mm -hmm. delete it from your list, whatever. Or if you don't read the books... It's actually quite interesting to listen to. I've talked to many people who listen to our reviews on Literary Treks that say, I don't even read the books, but I like to hear what the authors have to say, what their thoughts are on Star Trek. I like to learn about the books because I don't have time to read them, but to know about. So that's why this is here. So it's there for you to listen to if you're not interested in it, because a lot of Star Trek fans aren't into the books. You just skip over it because we got more episodes besides books. Definitely. So our second sub show that we're going to be doing is uh, an episode review show. So some people have asked us whether we're going to be covering each episode in depth on this show as it airs, whether that's Lower Decks or Discovery or Picard or whatever else we have coming in the future, Prodigy, etc. Our answer to that is we are going to be covering each episode in depth, but it's going to have its own separate show. And so for the next 10 weeks on Mondays, we are going to have a separate show that will show up in your podcast feed where we talk about each episode of Lower Decks. And then after that, when Discovery comes out, same deal for 13 weeks, we'll have special episodes talking about each episode of Discovery. So our first episode of this nature will be coming out on Monday, August 10th, and that will be Bruce and I talking about the first episode of Lower Decks, Second Contact. So I'm really excited about this. It's going to be above and beyond what we talk about in our main episodes. And it gives us an opportunity to really dig in deep and talk about these episodes without sacrificing our usual kind of Star Trek news and discussion content over here on what I've decided I'm going to call the flagship show (gasps) of Positively Trek. Yes! We didn't even discuss that, but I love that. Love it, love it, love it. Oh, good. Okay. I would have edited it out if you didn't like it, but... (laughs) No, no, I love it. No, I do love that. You know, here's the great thing, and of course, this was our our idea, so that's why I think it's a great thing, but for me personally, (laughs) if I was listening to a podcast, this is what I like about it, is that... Yes, you're going to get the flagship show. You're going to have us just talking general Star Trek stuff. But then there's going to be another episode that week that's us doing a review of a a new episode of Star Trek. And that same week, there could be three episodes. That same week, there could be a book club episode. So in one week, you could have three episodes, one covering an episode, one covering a book, and one just general Star Trek things. And again, if it's too much for you, if you're not interested in something, you just skip it. You know, go to the next thing. You won't hurt my feelings. Maybe Dan's, but not mine. Uh, but no. But here's the other thing I want to point out. When we do these episode reviews, we're also talking about having guests on. Maybe not all the time, but occasionally we'll have guests on. So it won't be just us talking through them. I know mean, a lot of people are, kind of, are going to be doing a lot of episode reviews, but the beauty of this podcast is you have a mix of different things that you can pick and choose from. Hopefully you listen to them all because I think you would enjoy it all, but uh, it's all in one place. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we give you an opportunity to check out all of those episodes. But again, if you're only interested in our episode reviews, you can only listen to those. Or if you're only interested in the flagship show, don't worry about it. We won't be hurt. Our feelings won't be hurt if you don't want to listen to the book reviews or the episode reviews. And we've made it a little easy for you. So You'll notice in your podcast app of choice, the show art that comes up for our show has had that kind of blue bar at the bottom. 
our two other shows are going to be color coded slightly differently so you can tell at a glance which show is in your podcast feed. So if you see it with a red bar, that will be the book review shows, the book club episodes. And if you see it with a yellow bar, those are the episode review shows. Now, why blue, red, and yellow, may you ask? Hmm, hmm I wonder why those colors. So random. <laughs> Just so random. I, I, th- I think uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And we are, of course, looking for feedback from all of you listening on any and all of these shows. So, you know, hit us up with an email at positivelytrack at gmail.com with your thoughts on our plans and when the episodes start coming out, what you think of the format, what you'd like to see changed up if you had the choice. Uh, and check us out on Twitter at Positively Trek as well. Yeah, I mean, we'll take all kinds of feedback or questions. If you want to ask us a question about a certain episode or book before we record, if we get that before then, then we can maybe incorporate that into the show. I mean, we want this to be very interactive and we want you guys to feel like you're just like friends with us. It's just, you know, we taped your mouth shut and you just have to sit there and listen to us. We can't respond back to you. The only way you can do it is typing to us. Unless, you never know, you could be a guest on the show someday. You just never know. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Really looking forward to those. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, But let's uh, let's continue on with some interesting news from this week. So, Bruce, have you heard the really good news from Sonequa Martin-Green at all? I did not. The only time I heard about it was when I looked in the show notes this morning. So on her Instagram, Sonequa Martin-Green has posted some photos of her and Kenneth Green's new baby girl, and she was born on July 19th. Congratulations to the happy couple. You guys look like a wonderful family, and I'm so excited for you. So I just wanted to get that out there, put that out there in the universe. Uh, congratulations to Sinequa Martin-Green, Michael Burnham from Discovery, on the new addition to her wonderful family. That is so awesome. I'm looking her up on Instagram right now. I just found it. Oh, yeah. Wow. These pictures are, yeah, like right when she delivered, like, or right after, I should say. (laughs) At least it looks like it. No, it's, yeah, maybe a day after. So, yeah, but yeah, this is great. Yay. Well, congrats. Yeah. I had no idea. I knew she was pregnant, but I didn't know that she had the baby. For sure. Uh, The other quick thing I wanted to talk about as well, uh, we're going to be getting to kind of Uh, I think an interesting discussion about the Emmy Awards and Star Trek, because there's some news in that this week. But before we get there, this is something that I found late last night before uh, the night before we record here. Lower Decks T-Shirt Club. Have you heard of this or know anything about this? I briefly saw something come out about it. I didn't spend a lot of time reading it. I just read like the first paragraph of it. And then I was like, I'll read this later. I forget there was something going on. But then I started digging into it more this morning before we recorded, and I thought, this is a brilliant idea, but I'm still contemplating whether I'm going to participate in this or not. Yeah, I'm not rich at the moment, but if I were, I would be all over this. This is so cool. So what they're doing is they're releasing a new t-shirt for each episode of Lower Decks as it airs, and you can join a t-shirt club and get each t-shirt as they're coming out or you can order each one separately kind of thing and this is crazy i've, I've never heard of a show doing this before it, have you, i mean i know fan sets had like the pins for each episode of discovery and things like that but i've never had heard of like a new t-shirt for each episode of a tv show I never have either, not to say it hasn't been done, but this is definitely the first time it's been done for Star Trek. And the idea of getting a new t-shirt after each episode sounds really compelling. But at the same time, I'm thinking, okay, well, it's $180 to participate in this. Now, you can do it individually. You can do $20 per selected t-shirt that you want. You don't have to take them all, but you could sign for $180 and get all of them delivered. But at the same time, like, that's 10 t-shirts. I mean, it's like, I got enough t-shirts. I'm trying to cut back (laughs) on the t-shirts. I actually just threw away my Star Trek animated series t-shirt that I had, which is funny because there's a t-shirt that's modeled after that of the the four crewmen running with the ship in the background. That's the t-shirt I got rid of. And look, people, 
I didn't get rid of it because I hate the animated series, because I don't hate the animated series, and how could I throw something Star Trek away? The reason I did is because it was a very thin shirt, and it was ripping and had holes in it, and I was, I was sleeping in it, and I was just like, I, I, you know, it's it's just time. But now I want to replace mm-hmm. it with this. <laughs> yeah, these are so cool, and and yeah, I really wish I I, I would love to get on board with this, but yeah, I kind of have the same issue you do. I have so many t-shirts and, uh, my wife, Nikki will, uh, point out that I don't really need more, I think. So, (laughs) well, if you think about it, if you went to the Star Trek store and you saw 10 t-shirts all different that were lower decks, you would look at that and go, Oh, let me pick a lower decks t-shirt out of the 10, or maybe I'll get two. You would pick like one or two, maybe three at the most that, you know, that you really like. You wouldn't go and go, well, let me buy all 10. Some people do because they're collects or, you know, it's part of their collection or whatever. But I wouldn't do that. But the idea mm-hmm. of getting a shirt every week, because I'm assuming they mail it every week, right? It looks that way. Yeah. And, and I'll be honest, if I were in a position to uh, be able to spend money on something like this, I'd be all over it. I, I think I would get all 10. I think it's just because of the novelty of this idea. I've never seen this done before. And I'm kind of like, yeah, I'd be on board. <laughs> yeah. Especially if they're mailing out every week, I would love to go in my mailbox and go, oh, got another t-shirt today. I can't wait to see next week's, you know? <laughs> nah, very cool. So, you know, they're looking to uh, make some money. So, uh, this looks to be a pretty cool way to do that. So I guess you just go to star trek.com and do it from there, right? <laughs> yeah, there is a, uh, a star trek.com article about it and it looks like you can sign up there. So I would suggest, yeah, go to star trek.com. Uh, it should be somewhere on the front page there talking about it. it should not be hard to find. I'd think I'll also, I will have a link in the show notes of this episode as well, directly to this page. Well, and I just noticed it said for 180 collect all 10. So you're getting them at discount. Cause if you get them individually, it's 20, but it also says you get a bonus shirt for being a member. So you're actually getting 11. Oh, 11 shirts. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Ooh, it's getting better each time. <laughs> oh, it's more and more tempting. Yeah. Check it out. These look pretty cool. <laughs> Well, the last thing that we are talking about this week are some Emmy nominations for Star Trek for this past year. Again, really exciting news. Uh, First of all, we have Star Trek Short Treks nominated for an Emmy, and they're nominated for an outstanding short form comedy or drama series. So that's pretty cool. What do you think of Short Treks being nominated in this category? I'm really happy about this, you know, because I'm also a Star Wars fan and I saw The Mandalorian got nominated for Best Drama. I don't think it's going to win. I hope so. It'll be great, but I don't think it will. But I was excited about that. But at the same time, I was like, oh, come on. Can we get Picard in there too? But then when I saw that we are having Short Treks in a, that nominated in that category, I was like, okay, well, I'll take that. That works for me. I'm really hope. I don't know the other nominees. I haven't looked at that, but I, I'm just, my spidey sense tells me there's a good shot that we could win this one. I I hope so. There are some heavy hitters in the, uh, that they're up against. So, uh, they're up against digital entries from Better Call Saul and The Good Place, which I think are going to be, uh, contenders. Uh, and there's also what are called quick bite series on the mobile platform Quibi, and those are the most dangerous game and the revival of Reno 911. Oh, so yeah. it's up against some heavy hitters. I really hope they come out on top in this category. I'm not sure. I, I do have to say I was really impressed with this last season, like this this uh, most recent batch of Short Treks episodes. Really impressed with them. So, you know, I, I think they're putting a really good product forward in this category. And I hope. Uh, I hope it's recognized. <laughs> yeah, I haven't seen any of the other shorts from these other uh, shows, but Better Call Saul has a lot of buzz, and mm-hmm. that could work against Star Trek right now. Uh, Quibi has got a lot of good content going on over there. I haven't been watching a lot of it, though, but yeah, it's, it may be tough, but there's still a good chance. And, of course, you mentioned Star Trek Picard, They do have five Emmy nominations, but unfortunately none in the acting or best series categories or anything like that. Uh, They do have five technical Emmy nominations for Outstanding Prosthetic Makeup, 
outstanding period and or character makeup, outstanding period and or character hairstyling. I, I, I'm not going to point out the irony of Star Trek Picard being <laughs> nominated for hairstyling. We'll just move past that. Uh, we have outstanding sound editing and outstanding sound mixing. So uh, all technical categories there, nothing on the uh, creative writing, directing, acting side, unfortunately. I would have loved it if Star Trek Discovery in season two would have gotten an Emmy for best set design for the Enterprise Bridge. That would have oh, made yeah. my day. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but it's not the first time that We've won Emmys, right? So the animated series actually won an Emmy. Yeah. So Star Trek, the animated series in 1975 won Outstanding Entertainment Children's Series. And this is Star Trek's only win for a category such as that. Now, Star Trek The Next Generation Season 7 was nominated for Best Dramatic Series, but they, of course, did not win. So... Uh, the animated series remains the only win in that sort of a category. So, you know, maybe we'll be making Emmy history with Star Trek again this year. Knock on wood. You never know. You never know. And if it's not this year, it could be Lower Decks next year. We get two animated Emmy awards. You never know. That would be really cool. <laughs> so, yeah, over the years, Star Trek has gotten a number of Emmy nominations and a lot of wins. But again, mostly in these technical categories. So, for example, uh, outstanding sound editing for a series is one that, you know, we've seen the next generation come up a lot for and other Star Trek series. Uh, makeup is also another one that they win a lot for. So Michael Westmore, of course, has racked up a lot of Emmy wins in those kinds of categories, but uh, not a lot on the uh, creative side. And I always find it weird to call them creative versus technical, because I don't know what you could call what someone like Michael Westmore does, if not creative. <laughs> That's true, for sure. I'm looking here at the list too, with the original series. I was, I don't know if I was aware of this, but in 1967, it was nominated for Outstanding Dramatic Series. Oh, that's true. Yeah. I, I didn't remember that. And then Leonard Nimoy, which I did know, he was nominated for Outstanding Continued Performance by an Actor in a Supporting Role in a Series. But what I didn't realize, that was for all three seasons. He, he was nominated three different times. Oh, wow. Yeah. Because I looked at another list and it said 1969, but I, I hadn't realized it was 67, 68, and 69 those nominations are all there. That's really cool. Oh, and I also see that Star Trek, the original series also was nominated in 68 for outstanding dramatic series. I, yeah, I didn't remember. Now I remember the next generation that seventh season. It's getting not its nomination. Cause I was watching, I don't know, something, you know, the news entertainment tonight or something like that. And I remember them showing the nominations being announced. And I remember the logo for the next generation came up and I was like, Oh, <gasps> gosh if we win this oh my gosh you know but of course yeah we didn't. i felt it was well deserved though yeah definitely you know maybe not for season seven yep. unfortunately yep i remember that too at the time i was like really now we're getting nominated when we're going off the air we're going to the movies now you're nominating us for this look i'm saying us like i'm part of the show but i was like really the last couple seasons before that were even better yeah absolutely and you know this is a, a thing that science fiction shows have, you know, unfortunately been slighted by awards. Same with science fiction movies generally over the years. For example, I, I have another Twitter account called Daily Dose of Trek, and I put out just little quotes from various episodes here and there, and I slowly making my way through all the series and episodes and that sort of thing. And I recently got to the Deep Space Nine episode, It's Only a Paper Moon. You cannot tell me that Aaron Eisenberg does not deliver an Emmy-worthy performance in that episode. But of course, he would never be nominated for that performance because, unfortunately, for in the eyes of, of the people that decide these things, he's playing a weird little alien with big ears on a show that's called Star Trek, you know, and it's unfortunate, but that counts against getting recognized. But that scene at the end between him and Vic, 
when he's talking about not wanting to go back to his real life, because if he could get shot, if he could lose a leg, then anything could happen. He could die tomorrow. That performance is so moving and so beautiful. I would put it up against anything that has won an Emmy award for years. Like it's so beautiful. I used to really follow the Emmy awards quite heavily back in the day. I hate that phrase, but I'm using it, (laughs) but I don't really anymore because over time I've gotten to realize how much of it is politics, how much of it is how much the studio or the network puts behind promoting it to the voters and such. So to me, it's a little skewed, but I, in no way do I feel like it takes away from the winners. I mean, they're, anybody who's nominated mm-hmm. and wins is well-deserving of it. So, I mean, those early days of Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, and Enterprise, they were syndicated, or they were on a little network called UPN, didn't have a lot of backing behind them, you know? Didn't have the clout, even on the network side of things. So to your point, yes, in science fiction, like Star Trek and others like it, it's harder to get votes and nominations. Uh, It's not taken as seriously. And then on top of it, you know, who's backing it up? Who's helping to really push it and promote it to uh, the Academy? So there's a lot of factors involved, but it doesn't take away the fact that good and great performances are happening or creatives behind the scenes with makeup. And as a matter of fact, I just looked, the Voyager theme won. Jerry Goldsmith won an Emmy for Best Main Theme Music. Yeah, well-deserved win there for sure as well. So I I do find that the current crop of Star Trek series seems to have more support behind it. Uh, CBS seems to really be pushing for, you know, nominations and wins in a lot of these categories for the various Star Trek series. So I think we're seeing a shift in that going forward, which is really nice to see. And of course we will report on any wins and or losses in the Emmy categories for these two shows. As we learn them on September 20th is when the winners will be announced. So look forward to that. Hopefully I, we we can rack up some wins for our favorite franchise. (laughs) That would be great. I hope nobody hates me for saying this, but I honestly, I love discovery and Picard. I really do. And I love short treks. I wouldn't be on this show if I didn't love them. In a lot of ways, when I was watching them, I never thought like, oh, I can see us winning an Emmy for best. Like, I, I, I don't think they're there quite yet. Not yet. Yeah. But yeah. could be as they continue and just refine some things and really get their footing, just like the next generation. You know, it took them a little while. I'm not saying that these are bad, but they're not necessarily at the point of winning, winning best drama in an Emmy Mm -hmm. category or being nominated maybe quite yet, but they could soon. Yeah. But definitely on these technical ones for Picard, I think, uh, you know, Star Trek's always had a really good shot at those. So, uh, you know, and a win's a win, you know, like we, we may not value the wins in categories that aren't, you know, acting and directing as much which is kind of unfortunate because, you know, you look at, for example, the costume design on Discovery by Gersha Phillips, I think is incredible. Mm-hmm. I was recently rewatching season one and those mirror universe uniforms from Discovery are just gorgeous. Like the work that went into those is incredible. Yeah. And maybe I take it for granted because in that situation, yes, I remember seeing those costumes and thinking, oh, that's Emmy Award winning talent right there. That deserves something. But I take it for granted, too, because all these other series at some point, even in the films, have won awards for makeup and technical achievements and stuff. So we're I guess what I'm trying to say is we're used to that, you know. And so it's like, OK, can we push the envelope a little more in another direction, too? Well, we will find out on September 20th for these categories and, you know, really pulling for short treks. I don't know. Uh, I hope it has the chops to win there. I, I don't know. These are some tough competitions. So. I'm really looking forward to finding that out. Me too. We'll we'll find out in a couple months. <laughs> well, we want to hear from you guys. Do you think that Star Trek Short Treks has a chance in this category? Uh, would you put up 
any of these shows for other awards, let us know. Again, you can email us positivelytrek at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. Find us on Twitter at Positively Trek. You can find me on Twitter at Kurtrats. That's K-E-R-T-R-A-T-S. And Bruce? Yeah, I'm on Twitter somewhere too. I think I'm, hmm, what is it now? Uh, oh, Admiral underscore Rex. That's Admiral with the underline Rex. So yeah, you can find me there and occasionally on the Star Wars Report podcast. Excellent. Uh, you know, it just occurred to me, and you and I maybe need to talk about this as an idea for a show, but what if at the end of the year we have our own awards, but just for Star Trek stuff? And who does the voting? You and me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or or something else. I don't know. Oh, oh, I have ideas. Okay. I'm... I'm going to, we're going to end this podcast and I'm going to sit down and I'm going to write up some ideas. That's good. Cause I have an idea too. It's like, we should do our own awards for television and we can have nominees like Better Call Saul and other things, but Star Trek will always win. Oh, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and best dramatic series goes to, oh, it's a joint win between Star Trek Picard and <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, it's a tie. <laughs> I love it. Yeah.